father has returned. Perhaps he should not have come back. Your father's return brings calamity, chaos, tragedy, and death. I am not afraid. You should curse the day. You know I must go back to England. You should have gone back a long time ago. This map is the Mediterranean Sea. I need safe passage from my fleet. I cannot deny that part of myself, which is still Viking. I want you to know that I can never forgive you for taking away my husband and my world. I promise you, my son, that one day the whole world will know and fear Ivar the Boneless. We assemble an army twice the size of the army our father took to Paris. Oh, you must seek revenge. We don't just declare war in England. The armies. How big are the armies? Hundreds? Thousands? Tell me. I need to know. Damn you! We declare war on the whole world. Be ruthless. This is the time of war. This is the time. How you all going? Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Great to be here. Congratulations on four and a half seasons uh, in the can, or I guess you have, I'm, I'm assuming you have the last half in the can as well at uh, this point. It's about, um, I think, 25 that we've already shot to go. 125? Is that what you said? No, oh, 20. Yeah. 20. There's 25 that have been shot uh, extra, you know? Wow. Oh, because you have 20 episodes uh, for the season five as well. Right? Yes. I have to ask, this show is so beautiful, but it also looks incredibly hard to make on the part of the actors. I mean, you're filthy in every frame of, of the show, Travis, I have to tell you. Um, but also on the part of the, on, on the, of the crew as well. It just looks like a tough thing to mount. I'm wondering, when you get renewed for season five, obviously 90% of you is celebrating. Is there a 10% of you that's like, oh my God, we got to do 20 of these now? Um, we're already uh, shooting season five. So that's going to be in the can in a few months. And... Uh... Uh, so then we're hoping to get season six. But the, the crew is so amazing. I always say that um, we could never shut the show anywhere else. You know, the crew in Ireland are so talented and hardworking and uh, they, they should get so much more credit than what they do. What are the days like uh, on this show? Is it as difficult as it, as it looks? I think they're harder for him because they're out sort of fighting battles and I spent all my time... On You're in a throne. On, I just sat on a throne. In the studio. It was you're very very nice. You get to be the puppet master. They're kind of the... That's right. Linus gets paid a lot more than all of us. So. <laughs> uh, no, but um, it, it's not as hard as they all say. I mean, it rains all the time, and it's long hours, but, you, you know, it's not the, certainly not the toughest job in the world. So where we, where we left, last left the show, uh, you were kind of being exiled from, from, from your kingdom. Where are we picking up? Uh, actually, the the next half of the season picks up exactly where we left off, where I'm uh, challenging whoever wants to be king to step up and um, trying to harden up my kids a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's a sense that Ragnar has to come back and deal with, you know, what happened with King Egbert earlier in the season. The betrayal. The betrayal. Yeah, so... There's Can we a, expect a sort of a, a big battle between uh, Ragnar and King Eckbert? You can expect a very interesting uh, meeting of minds and con a conflict within it, but uh, I'm not going to give away what actually happens. But it's like this inevitable uh, you know, meeting of these two powerful men that just has to happen, and, and we get to see that play out. But I'm not going to give any spoilers as to 
how big the battle is. <laughs> Uh, obviously, you know, the show is like a fictional representation of historical characters. How much do you guys sort of end up diving into the, these characters? How much do you feel like you have to know to be able to, to portray them? Um, uh, the biggest challenge as an actor, I think, we do some, especially on my side, I think, you do awful things as well, but uh, as a Vikings, to get the audience to follow you, even though you're doing these heinous things, you know? So I put more effort into... Um, uh, giving my character reasons why he does do uh, brutalize people. You, know? you you do an amazing job, Travis, of sort of creating empathy empathy through very small gestures. Uh, I feel like a lot of the time with playing something like a Viking, you're constant, constantly in war. One of the things that you do is sort of in between the shouts and in between the violence, you're very, very good at sort of applying facial tics or things or manners that make him seem a bit more sympathetic and sensitive to the scenarios around him. Yeah, I made a choice um, early on just to, uh, it's funny, you can get away with murder if you're good with kids. <laughs> I don't know why. But I always just made sure the kids were the most important things and to me, even though I'm not the best father, I think I'm the best father on the show. But um, I think I got away with a lot of bad stuff because I uh, love my kids so much. It, just to also say, the other thing I think he brings to the show is a lot of humour. You realise that Ragnar's actually a very witty, dry, you know, funny man. So he brings a lot of his own sense of humour to the part, which I think deeply humanises it. So it's not all just blood and guts and gore. And, and, and the other thing is, I think Michael writes very well for all of the actors to make the stories personal. Mm -hmm. So they're not just like historical drama playing out, because there's nothing more boring than that. So you actually empathize and connect with them as people. And you can sort of feel what they were feeling. So it's, it, it, Michael helps us a lot with the writing on that. When did you feel like he sort of tapped into that uh, with the king? I mean, because initially, you know, he's in some capacity kind of a villain. He's playing games. He's the puppet master. But when did you start to feel like Michael, the creator of the show, or the showrunner, started tapping into what also made him human? Well, it, it was a bit of a dance between the two of us, and I think Travis can speak to this too, but Michael sort of takes what actors give him in terms of response. He's very collaborative. But he gave me the idea that he needed a nemesis for Ragnar and that this character was, you know, he'd studied with the Emperor Charlemagne. He was more of an emperor than he was a warlord. And we started just riffing on that idea, and we'd go out, we'd drink wine, we'd talk, and ideas would come out. And he would respond to those ideas. Next, you know, you go out for a meal one night, and next day it's in the script. So there was a kind of a growth as we were shooting it, which is to just to say to do long form television and be part of the creative process like that is an amazing thing. Yeah, I was to just going to ask is that kind of the, the greatest part of doing television versus doing a film? Is when a film you have 20, 30 days, 40 days, and you kind of show up, you do what you can to sort of give the character life and then you leave, whereas a television show, you know, over the course of four or five seasons, you have writers and people responding to what they notice you do well and noticing like the things that you are sensitive to and end, and end up kind of writing for that a little bit. Right. Yeah, I think that's very true. And, and we've been very lucky. We've been able to age a lot too, which I don't think any, uh, not many shows, I've aged over 30 years or something. Yeah. And um, that's a great experience as an actor. You know. Have you asked them to make you look even even older? Oh, I was doing that from day one. <laughs> Try to, you know, literally rubbing mud on my face. I was just going to ask, what is your makeup process in the in the morning for the show? Do you walk over to a pile of mud and just go, <laughs> yeah. and then, all right, let's roll? Yeah. I definitely do with a costume. I do that little thing when you lay down and go in circles with your legs. But, um, no, there's great makeup artists out there, you know, and... Um, that's the main reason I wanted to shave my head because my my hair took too long to do in the morning. <laughs> so we made and it. You a had story. tattoos on your head on top of that. Yeah, which uh, was a bad decision. Do the ta are the tattoos applied at the beginning of the season and then they just sort of leave it on for the duration of shooting, <laughs> or do you? I wish, I wish, but no, they put it. They're like stickers. They put it on oh, every, morning. every morning. It takes longer to take off. Really? Yeah. Because they gotta have to like scrub it off. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Was that, were the tattoos your idea? Yeah, it was for, um, yeah, unfortunately, it was a dumb choice, but as for, um, because we do jump so many, uh, so much time in the show, so um, 
is a lot of the time it was just to show that there's been a time jump. Just put a few more tattoos on, you know? What has been uh, the most difficult aspect of the show in terms of shooting or prepping or character work for you guys uh, in, the, in the seasons that you've done? What's been the most difficult part? Well, <clears throat> without giving away what happens, <laughs> to be honest, the most challenging and the most exciting part was this big meeting between Ragnar and Egbert. Because a lot of thought went into how are we going to pull this off? What do these two men do when they confront each other? And uh, Michael was part of it. We were, Travis was very, he had a lot of very strong and good ideas. I had a lot of strong and good ideas. So there was, we butted heads quite a lot. But it was all for the sake of the show. Uh, so that was just, it, it was hard, but it was very creative. And I'm very happy with what I've seen of what comes out. We've been trying to work through more scenes together for a couple of years. So finally this year, um, we'd only done two scenes together prior yeah. to this. So um, finally this year we've got uh, a, a couple of really interesting yeah. episodes together. Well, walk me through without giving anything away, sort of doing that scenes together, doing those scenes together, because what I really like about what you just said was that it was a very positive reflection of the creative process while still using the word butting heads, which people always try to shy away from when, it talk, when they talk about the creative process, but it's a yeah. huge part of performance and directing and writing. There's several yeah. different people with lots of opinions about how something should be done, each of them applying a specific skill right. to the final outcome. So people are gonna butt heads. How did you guys work your way through it? What were some of the things that you butted heads over? Well, it, it kind of really works because in, um, in the show, we re really respect each other, but we still wouldn't mind if each other died. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, it just added more colors to our performances and everything. Yeah. yeah. It, you also, it, what, just to say what Trav likes to do, and I really appreciate it, is always thinking like, what can we do more? What, how can we take this further? How can we up the stakes? How does this become more, if you like, critical to the moment. So it's never that kind of lazy, here we are, we got a cushy job, we're just gonna do the, <laughs> you know? It really is like, wh what are the stakes of these two men? Their lives, their legacies, their history, their future, everything is in the balance. And, and then you, it just made you think more deeply and therefore you didn't wanna say something that wasn't true to that moment. And then when you acted it together, you wanted it to be true to the moment. And we even found a way it was great, actually, at one point, rather than breaking up the filming process, you know, it's like your shot, my shot, we found a way to have two cameras running simultaneously. So then you, you got can to just actually shoot do the you, scene with each other and feel yeah, it. You're yeah. actually just doing it in real time, and it makes a big difference. And it's a very simple thing to do, but not everyone will do it. But this crew was like, yeah, that's a great idea, let's do it. Do you have the kind of collaboration with not just the crew, but also uh, the writers and Michael as well, where when you're doing a scene like that, you can sort of work out different lines and, and sort of, you know, if it feels like the drama is sort of pushing towards this way, as long as it doesn't change the, you know, the next 10 pages of story, you can kind of work it out together? Well, normally, yeah, we, we, we totally have that sort of freedom. This, we put a lot of effort in before we shot on this particular relationship, so we didn't go that far off book when we did it. No, we didn't, because they'd actually changed the schedule because we kept saying, no, we're, we're not ready. Oh, we wanted more time. <laughs> well, well, what were you two developing? If you, I mean, again, I know we can't give anything away, so we're being really coy about this, but what, I mean, what did it feel like you weren't ready for? Well, I'm not, I'm not sure of an example, but there is, um, I feel like we pulled off a really long conversation, which could be so boring, and, um, mm. We shot it all in a row, and uh, it's very difficult to make a pretty well an hour-long conversation, an hour-long TV conversation, into um, yeah. entertainment. That's right. You know? And this thing of, you know, it's always that interesting idea. What would it be like to have two of the most powerful people, you know, in any given situation? You put them in a room, and there's no one else there. What would they actually say? Yeah. There's no press. Yeah. There's no. Crowd. You know, yeah but nobody's standing by, there's just them. What would they actually admit to each other about what it's like to have power? How much would they relate to each other? Yeah. yeah. What do they love, what do they hate? What would they actually confess to in each other's presence? Because they share a like mind. And I suppose it was trying to do like a fly on the wall thing and wanting it to be true, like Trev said. You just was it, it to be Is real. it an hour long episode of just- Well, no, not quite. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. But the conversation is, the conversation would be that long, but it's spread out. It's spread out, yeah. Over a couple, but there's one of my favorite scenes was when Linus and I were on the couch 
talking about our um, being kings in our own world and uh, I love the honesty where nobody else could hear and we, we go, uh, I asked him, are you corrupt? Oh, yeah, yeah. And then he asked me and I go, yeah. You know, but we can't admit that to our people, but it's a good private moment. Right. And then you screwed me over after. <laughs> When did this uh, sort of, I mean, I imagine you, the two of you have a friendship offset that is also sort of developed into this sort of like, how can we work this relationship into, or what we're talking about into the storylines of the show. When did that start developing between the two of you? Well, once again, we, we were pushing to do scenes, more scenes together for a long time. and um... Because you like working together? Well, I, th I don't know quite how it happened, but I just remember I joined the show in season two and one of my first scenes was that, scene with him in the bath where we had that meeting these two men meet and do a kind of deal and he says i'm a farmer and i said oh, i'm a king i need some help i need some warriors and there was something in that scene it just felt like oh i'd like to do more of this and it just felt like the stakes were high and you know it gave trav something to push against and and i think it went from there but as he said we went for them for two seasons and only had one other scene together so yeah. so we probably spent more time together yeah in the last month of shooting than we did the whole uh yeah. yeah. No offense. <laughs> we lived in different parts of Ireland. Uh, how do you guys like shooting in Ireland? The best. Yeah, yeah. amazing. I'd do anything there. Yeah. As long as I got my clothes on. <laughs> so you guys have been there for now five years, six six years going on at this point? Uh, four. Uh, four. Four or five, yeah. Yeah. What is it? What do you? What? How? What are your hours like when you're shooting versus what, how much time do you have offset? They're very sane, actually. I have to really? say, the whole way it's run there, it, it's an amazing setup. The studio's down in um, Wicklow, and it's in a beautiful part of the world. And, you know, most days you don't go over, like, you know, on shoots here in New York, you can end up doing, like, 18-hour days. And, no, everyone finishes mostly on time. Yeah, Europe's got um, yeah. a lot better rules over there. How is that possible? The show is epic in scope and... It looks in incredibly difficult to put together. I think it speaks to the talent that's involved in the team they've pulled together. They re I know we say it, and I know a lot of people say this about crews. You, you do get very close to a crew, but this is the best crew I've ever worked with. Wow. And they've all got uh, a kind of ownership in the show. You know, and there aren't, to be honest, there aren't lots of producers standing over everybody saying you can't do this and you can't do that. There's, everyone's told you know to bring their best, and and everybody does. So. It makes it all work. Everybody wants to make things work. So there, there isn't this sort of butting of heads and big fights and all that. There isn't like a thing. committee board making nope. the decisions. It's nope. like a very one person, two people making the decisions at yeah. the top and everybody sort of follows suit with that. Yeah. yeah. And there's not, there's not a huge amount of productions over there too. Right. So I feel like there's a bit of pressure for people to keep their job. Yeah. <laughs> so they so work got, really hard and do a tremendous job. You got everybody. You got, you got, all, you got the best of Ireland on your show. Yeah, for sure. Do, but it's also, I think, something... I mean, I, I've been to Ireland, but I've never spent so much yeah. time in Ireland, but there's something about the culture there. They're very proud. Oh, I just felt Very lovely. proud people. Proud people. No, they are very proud of what they do and their country. Well, that, country they're proud in that way, but also incredibly easygoing. I mean, you can go into a pub anywhere in Ireland, sit down, have a beer, have a chat, and it, it doesn't feel weird. It's just like they're the most sort of human in terms of just relating to you as whatever and just having a conversation. So the, like the opposite the of New York City. <laughs> go into a, a bar and try to have, have a chat with strangers. Who are you talking to? Yeah, what are you talking about? Get yeah. your own friend. Yeah. Um, let's open it up to the audience for some questions. Who has questions out here? We're going to start with a question from an online viewer. So Mimi says, when do you get to watch each episode and are they different or surprising from what you shot? It's pretty rarely when I um, actually watch one. I'm not a, I don't like my acting. <laughs> how many, out of all the episodes of the show, how many do you think that you've seen? Um, early on, I probably watch a few more, but to see, I'm not always on set. I want to see what other people are doing, you know. I was there, so I sort of know my stuff. But, um... Yeah, it's, you go, actually. I actually found uh, I didn't watch season two, and then when I came back for season three, I couldn't remember what had happened. So I had to watch it. Um, but I, I think, to be honest, it's best to leave time before you watch an episode, because uh, if I'm still connected to what I did, so connected, I still remember, oh, they didn't use that bit, and oh, they've cut this scene short, and... I'm full of that. So if I leave a long enough time, I can't remember, and I go, oh, that's, that's 
it's quite good. Right. For, I mean, for everybody that works on a, on a movie or a TV show, everything that exists outside of the frame is sort of like what you remember. There's no way that you can really remember just what the frame is showing you. Uh, next question. Hi, thanks for being here. Um, I was wondering, do you find it different acting um, in a period piece rather than something contemporary? Is it more difficult or? Um, it's a bit more of an effort, I mean, uh, period stuff, just because of, I'd love to do a role just in shorts and a t-shirt. <laughs> we had Maggie's plan this year where we played the pickle man. Yeah, I had shorts in that. <laughs> So that was just a dumb actor's choice. I decided to wear shorts, and it was like January in New York. But um, yeah, that was good. But there's uh, a lot of effort goes into the period stuff, but I, for me as an actor, it's the same. You have relationships with people. I think the world always changes, obviously, but you still love your kids. You still have women issues. <laughs> a lot, a lot of women issues. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, the heart's still the same, and that's how people relate to shows, you know? Yeah. But it's the same, you're trying to defend your family or do what's right by your kids or make them proud of you. And I think that's the same as in any time period ever. I think I was probably a little more aware of it in terms of what it meant to be a king. You don't see many of them walking around New York these days, you know? So uh, I also was very grateful for the way our set was designed and the way our costumes were done, because literally you put all that stuff on and you kind of felt important. <laughs> so in terms of acting, period and stuff, I didn't tr consciously think about it, but you did have to remind yourself of things, like you couldn't have a fork, because they didn't have forks. So you had to eat with a knife. And you know, so we weren't trying to be incredibly accurate, but our crew and our team created something where it was almost impossible not to be, you know. And, Michael writes in a way where he's got a sense of it's not modern day, is a little echo of it's not just natural speech, which helps you, you know. And once you sort of, I think what you're saying is once you sort of put on the period costumes, start eating with a fork or a knife I, instead of a fork, it changes who you are and how you act and, and your posture and everything about you. Yeah, that's true. And we hardly used any green screens at all. Yeah. I mean, visual effects are amazing, the top of the hills and some certain locations uh, they did an awesome job. But um, all the set, like the boats were really rowing the boats and sailing the boats and they were real horses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we have to have one more question. Hi guys, how are you? Uh, I'm curious, what's your favorite character on the show besides yourself? <laughs> <laughs> well, my favorite character is him. <laughs> No, right. without a doubt, because uh, as it's the last question, I mean, I, when I was asked to join the show, uh, I was, uh, my agent said there's a, been offer of a role in this thing called Vikings. I'd never seen it or heard of it. I thought, oh, God, here we go. It's going to be blood porn, you know. <laughs> and I started watching it, and I started following this guy with his amazing story and seeing it grow, and I thought, oh, wow, I'd love to be part of this. And so... To become, to join something, it must be like when Ronnie Wood joined the Rolling Stones, I felt like, you know, I got a good gig, you know, so. Um, but he became my favorite character also to work with. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah. I was going <laughs> to. You not, can pay me up. I'm not picking anyone, so I feel bad. But uh, most enjoyable scenes um, or motivating as an actor who was with the Linus. And when do we get to see uh, this big scene between the two of you that you're that you're talking about? Is this in well, Wednesday's um, episode coming up, part B of this season? Or it's next in week? it's in part B of this season, but um, yeah, the show starts on Wednesday at nine on History, and I think all these episodes are. Yeah. Everybody always says it gets better, but yeah. I think these are pretty special episodes. Well, the trailer looks beautiful. The show is beautiful, guys. Congratulations! Thanks so much for Thank being you. here. Thank Wednesday you. Wednesday night, nine o'clock, History Channel, Vikings.